Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Riddhi Datta and in this video, we are going to continue our LLD playlist that is the low level design playlist. We are going to cover the singleton design pattern in this video. Not only I'm going to cover the basic singleton design pattern, but I'm also going to cover uh, how you can make this design pattern thread set. That is, I'm going to introduce multi-threading concepts as well because that is a very, very important question asked in interviews. If you haven't checked out my other design pattern videos and other LLD videos, you can find uh, it in my LLD playlist. Uh, down below so now let's continue with the video so as you can see there are, i've created two class one is the tv set class uh, that is that something that is that we are going to make a singleton class and then is a driver class to test our code out right that is that will be basically having the main function now what does the singleton design pattern says right singleton design pattern says that the class can have only one instance right so if you try to create another instance of that particular class you will get the same old instance that was created so basically in simpler words the class can be instantiated only once it cannot be instantiated more than once and that is why the nomenclature goes as singleton pattern right now singleton pattern finds its uses in a multiple places even in java we have singleton patterns even in the java libraries now let's see that how can we make a singleton design pattern right so and also how can we make that thread set we are also going to look at that as well because that again that is a very important asked interview question i was asked singleton design pattern in my tcs interview also i was asked in a lot of other interviews as well uh, so you can understand this is not a not a topic only asked in product based companies but also if you're sitting for service based companies as well so even if you are a fresher you should definitely check out this video so now as you can see that uh, that is a TV set class that I've created and there is this constructor to this class though this constructor was not required because it's a default constructor but still I have created this constructor just to keep things very clean so let's say that this TV set is one single entity so every member has to use this one single TV set right so let's say if member one from the family right let's say there's a family there's only one TV set and member one from the family wants to watch the TV he needs to get the TV object right or the get needs to get the TV set object so he will get the same object as the member two of the family will get because basically in practice there is only one tv set so it can have only one instance of the tv set object that cannot be more than one tv set object because it practically in real life doesn't exist let's just say the problem goes like this so whenever the member one requests a tv set object that object that it gets would be equivalent to the object that the member two will get if they request a tv set object so right now do you think in the code with like the basic code that we have for Java that we're generally used to with this code are we able to achieve that no right so if you go and print this let's let's go and run this program so we'll see that two separate objects are being created right so you can see that these are having different hash values so we can understand they're not equal these are two different objects that are, that has been created and therefore the singleton design pattern is being violated we need only one instance right of this particular object and we cannot instantiate this object again again and again then what can we do the first thing that can that we can see is that the member of the client let's say has the liberty to call the construct and that is very normal that's that's how we're used to in java right but we cannot let the client or the member to have the liberty to call the constructor directly because if they have the liberty to call the constructor directly they will end up creating more than one instance of the object if there are n clients they will create n instances if there are n members in the family they will create n tv sets but what i want is all the n members would have access to only one tv set the tv set object would only be created once so how can we do that so the first step is making this constructor object private so you know this is kind of weird like this also kind of freaked me out when i also studied singleton design pattern back in my college days normally we are used to see the constructor being public but yeah in singleton design pattern you have to make it private so that so that the client or the members cannot directly instantiate this class so now i have made this class or the constructor private right that means the client can't, can't access or access the constructor but now the question is how can they get the instance of the class so for that i have to create a method right so it will be something like public tv set it will return a tv set class get tv set instance and this method will call the constructor right also we need a flag right so we need a, we need a flag to check that whether this 
instance is already created or not how can we do that we can do something like this boolean is created right is equals to false and whenever we find if it is already created we also need the instance right because we we need the instance to store because when if the if it is already created we have to return that particular instance so therefore we need also need to store a tv set instance right so tv set instance initially it will be null so if it is created we just return the tv set instance else we do tv set instance is equals to new tv set and we make this is created to true and we return the tv set instance so now this code can slightly be modified if you if you look closely this boolean value is not needed right what we can do is we can just do something like this if tv set instance is equal to equal to null that means it is not being created yet then we do this that we that means we create the new tv set instance we don't require this and else if it is if it is like already created we don't enter this loop we don't call the constructor again and we simply return the tv set instance so what this ensures is that using this instance object both as the flag value, value as well as the instance of the object right we ensure that the constructor the constructor of the tv set is only called once it is being made private so that the clients cannot access it and misuse it by calling it again and again right and therefore this power of instantiating or uh, or you know calling the constructor is being handed over to the class itself right and this class maintains the inner property which is this tv set instance where it maintains the instance variable initially it is null so if it is null then we know that this instance is not being created it it creates the new instance of the tv set it returns that if it is already created it doesn't create the new instance again so in this way we ensure that the constructor is only called once for this particular class and hence it is ensured that every time a client wants this tv set instance it will get the same object only right now you might ask that hey how do i call this method right because this method in order to be called we need a object of this tv set class isn't it because methods can only be called in objects and we don't have an object the client doesn't have an object yet because it in order to have an object it needs to get access to this constructor it needs to call new tv set and then it can call new tv set dot get tv set instance right but we're not allowing our members to have access to this and that is why we created this method in the first place so that the uh, members doesn't have access to this tv set constructor so how do we solve this problem the answer is static keyword right so we know if we make this method static we don't need an object of this class to call this method right because static methods in order to call them they don't need any instance of the class therefore we need to make this method static and since we are making this method static uh, we also need to make this private static as well private is access modifier and static because we are using it in a static context now i'm also going to print out so that you can see that this is being instantiated only once because if it is only instantiated once it will only be printed once right uh, so let's say tv set instantiated okay now let's go back to the driver class and instead of doing this let's do tv set because now it's a static method tv set dot get tv instance and we also do the same over here as well okay now let's run this code uh, so if we run this code we see that the t both the members call for this get tv set instance but the constructor was only called once right two members but the constructor was only called once and also the object's hash value is the same right? that means that there is only one instance of this object that has been returned to both member 1 and member 2 so when member 1 call this get tv get tv set instance right they got an object of this tv set instance and then the member 2 got the same instance right so this is about singleton design pattern on a very higher level and this is how you can make the singleton design pattern so you will need to like make the constructor private introduce a flag variable which which will have the instance right and you also need to make a static method now let's look at the second part of this video 
that let's say that if you want to run this class in a multi-threaded environment will this piece of code work so let's say if i create an executor service so basically i'm not going too much deep into this executor service concepts because these are primarily java concept and if i go uh, deep into these uh, concepts uh, then it would be a huge digression to this video so i would try to keep this video more towards singleton design pattern so for now you can um, think like this that executor service is basically a class in java that you know allows you to execute uh, it basically takes a runnable uh, as an argument and that allows you to you know uh, run your code in a multi threaded environment right so what you can understand over here is that this get tv instance class because of these two threads they are being called parallel now let's see what happens as a result of that ideally like the tv set constructor should only be called once and as a result we ideally want this to be printed once right but let's see does that really happen no that doesn't happen this tv set is instantiated twice so what is going wrong over here what is going wrong is as i said that due to this executor service right this tv set instance is being called at the same time right and when they are almost called at the same time they both see that the tv set instance is equals to equal to null and hence they both end up instantiating the tv instance set instance class twice and that is why we are getting two instances so what can be a good way of solving this so one of the ways can definitely be making this synchronized right so now what does the synchronize do again a synchronize is a keyword in java uh, i am not again going too much deep into this synchronized concept but for now you can understand is making this code uh, making this function synchronize would ensure that only one thread can access this function at a time right so only out of the two threads only one thread would be allowed to enter and if you, if we save this and if we run this then we would see that this constructor would only be called once let's actually go and run this we see that it is only called once but is this a good piece of code or is this an optimal way of solving this problem let's deep dive into it to understand why not first of all synchronize has its overhead right also we are making synchronize on the entire function that means that means just to ensure this line of code is not being executed more than once we are ending up making this whole function synchronize or so we are blocking the access of other threads to this function also there might be a lot of other things or, or other heavy things that might we might end up doing before returning this tv set instance like making this tv set instance object for instance right but and those things that uh, there is no need to make th those things thread safe right it is only this one line of code that we need to make thread safe so just to make this one line of code thread safe it is not a good advice you know to put the synchronized keyword on the function level also let me give you a very one practical example over here let's say time t0 right let's say time t0 uh thread 1 so let's make it time 0 right uh let's say thread 1 and thread 2 try to access right so only one of the thread wins right and then it's fine it's it's like they return the uh, instance and the thread 2 uh sees that the tv set instance is already created so it returns the tv set instance right but let's say time 5 let's say t5 t thread 6 thread 7 and 100 other threads simultaneously try to you know uh, access this function does that synchronized keyword would actually make any sense because now that the tv set instance is already created right there is like it, it won't make sense to you know uh, like make this entire uh, function synchronized once this instance is already created because like we were trying to make this line only thread safe but now we know that the tv set instance is already created so it would never enter this line right so my point is once the tv set instance is successfully created right and then if the other threads try to access this function we know that it is never going to access this particular line of code because in the if condition it will find as null okay but since we have made it synchronized we are adding extra overheads right so that's the problem of making uh, the entire function synchronized again i repeat this if you have still not understood that this is the line that we want to make thread safe okay so initially when the tv set instance is null two threads can simultaneously come into this line because they would both find the tv set instance as null two or more than two threads right but once this is already instantiated and is being returned and at time five when, when the thread is already when the instance is already being created we know since the tv set instance is not, not null anymore it is never going to come across this line 
So what is the point of synchronize in that case? So when you already know that the TV send instance is created and is never going to come to this line 13, we don't need to make it synchronized anymore, right? So how do we overcome this? So let's remove the synchronized keyword from here because we saw that, that it doesn't make much sense to make this entire function synchronized. Instead, what we can do is we only need to make this part of the code synchronized, right? So now we need to only make this section of the code synchronized, right? So let's go and make that. So synchronized block, right? So now what is a synchronized block? A synchronized block is basically similar to like a synchronized method only. The only difference is when you make the method synchronized, only one method, only one thread can access that particular method. And if you make a block synchronized, only one thread can uh, access that particular block at a time. And you also need to pass a lock object to the synchronized uh, uh, synchronized uh, keyword. So that is a basically an object type. So for now, we can pass instead of creating a new object, we can just pass uh, TV set dot class. Right? Again, this is a concept of reflection, but you don't need to uh, go too much uh, deep into it. We can understand that this is just an object we are passing and this is basically treated as a lock. So whoever, whichever thread will have access to this particular uh, of lock, he will be able to execute this piece of code. Right? So now what happens is whenever multiple threads are coming, right? And if the instance is already created, let's say time t5, this, let's consider this case first. The thread is already created. We see that it's not null. So it won't be getting inside the synchronous object at all. And as a result, they won't be waiting, right? So a lot of time would be saved once this instance is created. Earlier, what was happening was we had made synchronize on the method level. So irrespective of whether this instance is being created or not, all the threads are waiting. But now if we find that it is not null, it is already created then the threads will simply go and do the heavy work, whatever they need to do. And they will just return the instance, right? Because they will already have it. Only if, only if, let me put a bracket over here as well. Only if they find a TV set instance is null that is not being created, then we need to make it synchronized. But does this also solve the problem? No, that is another edge case that you're missing out. Let's say at this instance is not created, that is at time zero, both T1 and T2 calls this function, right? That is get TV instance. And they find that, okay, both, they see both, they're both, uh, both uh, of the TV set instance is null. But as we have, like use synchronized keyword. So one, only one of the threads would get access to this block, right? So now both T1 and T2 are here, but let's say only T1 gets access to this block. So T1 comes and creates this new TV set object. And now T1 releases the block, right? Now T2 gets the chance because T2 was waiting in the queue. Now T2 will again go and create the TV set instance. Understanding what is the problem? Because we have done the check over here so that we don't unnecessarily use synchronized uh, keyword into action, right? So we can't remove it from here because it would le uh, lead to performance issues otherwise. But apart from that, we understand that, hey, if you do this, all the threads that are waiting initially when the, when the you know, the CV send instance was null, it will continue waiting. Once the first thread has done uh, instantiating this object, uh, this class rather, the other threads will go on and create multiple instances because they've already done the checking, they were waiting and once they have the turn, they would again instantiate this new object. So how can we stop this? So that's where the concept of double checking comes in. That's why you call it. That's why if you go and read singleton using multi-threading, you will read this concept of double checking or double locking something like that. So here we will again use the, this is conditions that we're using there, right? So this is what we call double checking. So now, T1, T2 both comes, one of them get access, they check that it is still null, they creates it. Now T2, T1 is done, T2 gets access, T2 sees the TV set and says no more null. So they will simply break out of the loop. So how, hence we ensure that the constructor will only be called once. So again, this if condition is for optimization so that, you know, when the instance is already being created, the threads really don't need to wait for the synchronized process because it is already being created. And this is basically for double checking that that initially the you know instance was not created and multiple threads are waiting to instantiate that but one of the threads eventually did so other threads don't need to create that right so in this way with the help of double locking or like double checking right not double locking I would say double checking right we are able to save our singleton design pattern also one more thing we need to make this instance volatile 
again i'm not going too much deep into what volatile keyword does in java but you can consider it like this that whenever you have a flag because you can understand this is basically acting as a flag so whenever you have a flag that is being said by one thread and other threads are kind of using that flag uh, to do some operations so you can see what this this tv set instance flag is set by only one thread and other threads are using that flag to understand whether it should you know instantiate this object again or not right or whether this should instantiate this object at all so whenever we have such scenarios we use the volatile keyword generally what happens on a higher level is every thread maintains a local copy of every values in their cache right and if you're not using the volatile keyword they're using that you know so let's say let's say that uh, you're doing something like this right so let's say you're doing a uh, while f while flag and you're performing some operations right and some other thread changes this flag value so the this thread won't be able to you know get this uh, get the get the updated value because it is still reading the value from its local copy uh, where it is not updated right and it will continue doing its work right so in order to you know flush this value into this local uh, local uh, value or the local copy right we need to use the volatile keyword so what volatile keyword does on a higher level is basically whenever some other thread updates this flag value it kind of flushes it into other threads local copies so that they get the updated value so that's on a higher level again like i'm not covering volatile keyword uh, uh, on a very uh, like deeper level in this video if you want i can make a separate video on that uh, so for now you can understand it like this so whenever you are using a flag kind of a variable which is like changed by one thread but accessed by other threads then we need to use the volatile keyword cool so now let's try to you know run this uh, code uh, multiple times we should get let's see what we get uh, so ideally the constructor should be only called once and that's what it is even after calling this tv set dot get instance multiple times okay uh, i think there's a there's a lot to digest in this video i know about that but it's a very very important topic for interviews especially this thread safe conce concept the double uh, checking concept but what if I also tell you now, even after doing so much of things, this singleton design pattern can still be breached in this code. That can be done using Java Reflection API, that can be done using uh, clonable, serializable. These are some of the concepts that are not needed, really asked in interviews. So if you like do the singleton design pattern only till this, you will clear the interviews undoubtedly. No one asks you in such depth. But if you are inquisitive, like how can we still breach the singleton design pattern, right? Then I can make a separate video on it. So do comment down below if you want a video on on that. I will make it out. I, I, it is not going to be a very long video, probably a four to five minutes of video. But I will have, I will be more than happy to make a video on that. Anyway, I hope uh, this video was insightful for you. I will hope I was able to make the concepts uh, clearer to you because I feel that singular design patterns are very very important topic both for freshers as well as uh, you know experienced professionals from sd1 to sd2 everyone get asked this question it's a it's a very very important design pattern so next up on this playlist would be probably i think i would be covering rate limiting uh, lld machine coding uh, so don't forget to you know subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that every time i upload a new video you are notified also don't forget to check out my graph playlist where i have covered uh, graph problems also don't forget to check my dsa patterns playlist as well having said that uh, i wish you all the best for your interviews and for your future endeavors and we'll see you in the next one